In this episode of In the Trenches with Dave Lapham, brought to you by First Star Logistics, we visit with Craig Wolfley, color analyst of the Pittsburgh Steelers. And we're visiting with a heavy heart, to be honest, because Tunch Ilkin, friend of mine and like a brother, Craig Wolfley, unfortunately passed away from ALS just a few months ago. And um, <laughs> it's had an impact on both of us. There's no question about that. We'll talk about that a little bit. We'll talk about the Bengals matchup. We'll talk about a lot of other things that Craig Wolfley has done from a competitive standpoint in his athletic career. And you won't believe some of the things Craig Wolfley has done. He is definitely a character. There's no question about it. Due to video technical difficulties, this edition of In the Trenches with Dave Lappin brought to you by First Star Logistics will be audio only. Welcome once again to In the Trenches with Dave Lapham. Special guest, and I mean very special guest today. None other than Craig Wolfley, color analyst for the Pittsburgh Steelers. My man, how goes it today? Well, it's going, brother. As you know, we've had a few weebles and wobbles here trying to get this thing going, my friend. But, you know, we're getting it done because, after all, we are two Syracuse men. <laughs> and we come along here with locking arms for this broadcast and getting her done. Getting her done is, is what it's all about. And, like, I'm, I'm glad you mentioned Syracuse because – you were an All-American and, uh, you know, four-year starter at Syracuse University, and you were elected to the All-Century team. That dog will hunt, my man. That's a heck of a college career at the old Qs. That just shows you that uh, there's no common sense in the voting, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what these guys were thinking. I wouldn't vote for myself on a secret ballot, you know, but <laughs> I'm honored and privileged, and uh, it is extraordinary, and I'm most humbled by it, that's for sure. Yeah, it's it's a heck of an honor and, and, and richly deserved. Uh, you played 12 years in the NFL, 10 with the Steelers, a couple with the Vikings. But the other thing is that this is a bad man, ladies and gentlemen. Craig Wolfley, he did weightlifting, boxing, sumo wrestling, martial arts. Ni- 1981, you placed fifth in the world's strongest man competition. What was that like? What was that all about? Oh, uh, Dave, I'm telling you what, it was a barrel of fun, man. You know, the thing about it is it was so great is that, uh, you know, you could bulk up. You stopped running before you got <laughs> to training camp. You know, I was eating like a, a dozen eggs a day and a pound of bacon. And I got all the way up to like 284, 85, something like that, right? And I get there, and these guys are bigger than anything I've ever seen in my life. Oh, my the God. average competitor in that world's strongest man was 6'6", 340 pounds. Jeez. And these guys were huge huge but you know it was an extraordinary opportunity i loved every moment of it i loved competition and i loved to throw myself and pit myself in and see what i could do against all you know the top-notch guys that's that's unbelievable that that's just an amazing feat and then in 85 you placed second in the first professional sumo wrestling tournament ever held in north america sumo wrestling what got you into that <laughs> well actually that was part of the uh, world's strongest man they were trying to launch a sumo tournament um that was you know that would move around the country uh and and so they were that was the keynote event and i gotta tell you that was that's a bad visual you know even <laughs> today my kids cringe when they go dad you're wearing like a diaper huh <laughs> it's like hey you're 22 23 years old what you, you don't think about it you know yeah but it, it was a lot of fun it was uh incredible i remember my first round opponent was a guy from europe Named uh, Stago, and he was six, four and a half, and I think he was four hundred and eight pounds. Wow! And when I beat him, I I threw him down. He we both you know crash landed him, stood up. He looks at me and goes, "I didn't think you could do that." I said, "Neither did I, brother." <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable! You also hold a black belt in jujitsu. Uh, that's the, what the heck, man? I mean, I, you're no one. No one wants to. Be in a dark alley with Craig Wolfley one on one, man, because they're oh. in trouble. They're in trouble. <laughs> at, at this point in time, I'm the only trouble you're going to have is if we're going for the same last piece of pizza. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's, yeah, uh, I got to tell you, that was one of the most grueling tests I ever went through. Was getting my black belt in jujitsu. Oh man, it was a three hour test, back to back to back, and it was. I tell you what, man, I, I couldn't do that again. That was just brutal. So what was it like boxing Butterbean? You boxed Butterbean, too. What was the deal? What was that like? 
Oh, it was tremendous. You know, we're down at Gulfport Casino, 10,000 rednecks and Billy Bob that all wanted to see me, uh, you know, take it. He caught me in the fourth. It was a great, great bout. And the thing about being that makes him so unusual, he's like, he's like 5'10", and he was 365. And I mean, when he crouches in the stance, it's like between his chin and his belt, there's like six inches, you know, in his head. It's like it's like a bowling ball on a redwood tree stump. That's what you're facing with. And it was just a tremendous time. We punched the crap out of each other. It was great. But he got me. And uh, I gotta give it to him. He got me. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Well, yeah, you've you've had you are. You you're a competitor, man. Whatever whatever it is, you're gonna do it, right? I mean, you're gonna give it the best shot you got, man. That's your life, isn't it? Dave, I once competed in a professional tug of war tournament. Really? Really? <laughs> I mean, how yeah. First of all, you know us hogs, right? Yep. Standing in one place and pulling on something that's not moving. That's not really our bag. You know, we're movement oriented, oriented right. large prairie mammals. You know, I mean, right. we move. And and that, but it only goes to show you just how demented I was as a young man. I loved to compete. It was just something that, you know, I just, it's crazy. So anyhow, uh, that was quite an, an opportunity to puke in, in sand. It's amazing <laughs> how those that, that hurts. <laughs> oh man and then you have you, you had a great career with the with the pittsburgh steelers like we talked about and, and finished up with the the minnesota vikings and, and one of your uh your teammates and, and, and good friends uh the, the legendary tunch ilkin unfortunately god rest his soul lost a battle with mm-hmm. uh lou gehrig's disease and and i know you guys were like family and i, I love both you guys yeah. man and uh and and for to lose to lose touch so early i mean it's just uh it's 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 sad isn't it and uh and and i guess you're honoring uh honoring touch ilkin uh doing what you're doing there's no doubt about it you know dave the, the beautiful thing about it is is you know you're a compadre touch loved you thought the world of you as do i there's a brotherhood amongst the offensive linemen right. and um so we feel each other's pain and and today was Tunch's 64th birthday. Crazy. And, uh, you know, I know that my brother is getting a, it's a 64th heavenly birthday celebration <laughs> here, I should say. And, uh, you know, he's with Jesus. Um, I was with him at the end and, uh, with his bride and, and, and my wife, Faith, we were there together and, and, and some others. And, 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 you know, when he, when he went, he went very peaceful. He had a smile. And I, I said to uh, my wife and Karen, as we were sitting there, he was looking off into that it's that distant look that you know that he's about to step from this world to the next. Right. And I, I said to him, look, he's, he's seeing Jesus, man. I'm telling you, he had a smile on his face. Wow. So he went peaceful. And I miss him. He's my brother. We've been together. Uh, we were drafted. Of course, I was drafted fifth, and I always remind him he was just a six-round draft pick <laughs> right. when we were drafted together in 1980. But uh, we've been, you know, best friends and, and roomies on the road and stuff like that for 41 years. So wow. it's been quite a ride, and I miss my brother, that's for sure. Yeah, that's, that's uh, I, I know I know he was a man of faith. His, his faith was extremely yeah. important to him, and, and uh, that's, that's just, uh, I'll tell you, sometimes the good die young, you know? There's, there's no question about it, and, and Tunch made a hell of an impact on, on a lot of people, there's Absolutely, the fact. And, Amen to that. Yep. Amen to that for sure. Let's uh, let's talk a little bit about the matchup that's coming up on Sunday: Cincinnati Bengals at Pittsburgh Steelers. How, how are the Steelers playing at this point in time? You know, Dave, it's really been something that's been a tale of two games where you know you go into Buffalo and a lot of people were picking Buffalo to win. Right. Uh, it's a raucous, tough place to win. You know, Highmark Stadium there with my fellow Buffalonians, I grew up 2.4 miles from that stadium. So I've played there collegiately. I've played there as professional and it's a tough place to win. Yep. And the Steelers won and they won with an overwhelming, uh, bit of pressure on Josh Allen. I mean, they really got after Josh Allen, mm-hmm. you know, Cam Hayward all by himself had 12 pressures. Jeez. He had a sack, a forced fumble. Uh, you know, I mean, he was, he was just amazing. And they tortured that bill's offensive line. Uh, coming after Josh Allen. And then the next week, they couldn't get the same pressure on uh, Derek Carr. Now, part of it was they lost T.J. Watt, but Derek Carr stood up under the pressure and threw the ball and, you know, it it got after the Steelers. And so I guess it's come down to a lot of people got hurt defensively. 
right. for the Steelers. The running game hasn't yet gotten to where they, they want to uh, with Najee Harris and a rebuilt offensive line. So that's basically where they're at. They're one and one like everybody else in the division, and it's going to be a heck of a game, I think, come this Sunday. You know, when you, when you look at it, you talk about the, the injuries. Um, to it is on injury reserve. Alu Alu just went on injury reserve with a broken ankle. Right. I mean, the, the starting defensive lineman, you know, it's like th- those two are huge impact guys. You mentioned TJ Watt, you know, as a, as a, as a rush outside rush guy with the, uh, a bit of a groin issue. Highsmith with a groin issue. Hayden, uh, a little bit of one Devin Bush, some are worse than others. Do you, do you expect every all hands on deck or what do you think, Craig? Well, right now, um, TJ came through practice uh, yesterday, and he was limited. Devin Bush was full full board on. Joe Hayden, I think, uh, was was limited. So it's really going to be, you know how it is. Yep. You give them till Friday, and you see whether they're going to dress or not, and that's what we're going to be waiting on. I'm hoping. Look, T.J. Watt means so much to this team. If you saw his, you know, in, in, in 32 home games at, at Heinz, he's had, uh, I'm sorry, 34 home games at Heinz. He's had 32 sacks. Oh and it's gosh. amazing, you know, with the crowd, you get after it. All his numbers rise at the Heinz field, and all the Steelers' numbers fall when he's not in the lineup. For instance, when he's not in the lineup in pass rushing, um, quarterbacks uh, have a 113 quarterback rating. <laughs> with, with when TJ's, uh, I'm, uh, when he's in the lineup, it's 72. I mean, it's just Jeez. phenomenal. All the other ones from cat pass completions to uh, pressure rate. They're all, it all rises and falls with TJ. That's amazing. That's amazing. And, and he got paid and right, and rightfully so. He's a, he's a difference Ooh. maker. He's a, he's a game wrecker, but you, you, you mentioned Hayward. I got a ton of respect for that dude. Now I, th- I think he's a, he's a beast and a half. And, and I'm telling you, if, if the Bengals sleep on Melvin Ingram, whew, that, that dude, he can still play. Can he, you know, David, you're exactly on brother. I mean, you know, we as offensive linemen, all you do is flip on the, the the switch and you watch the film, and you know you can quote stats out the wazoo and everything else. All you all we need is just watch the dude play. Yep. You know he gets after guys. He bull rushes. He bull rushes. You know the old school. Put your forehead in the man's chin, climb the body, yep. and and take him back to the quarterback. And that's what he does. But he rushes from off the ball as well. Two three man games they use him in and had been using him in. But, you know, you also got Alex Highsmith, who also has a groin on the other side. And this young man has shown promise. But, again, you know, you're running out of healthy bodies. And behind them is Jameer Jones, who is a, is a rookie and, uh, you know, out of Notre Dame, undrafted free agent, who showed up real well during the preseason. But, obviously, you know, you're missing some big guns up there. Cam Hayward is, again, the big guy, like you said. He, I always tell Cam. Your reason number one thousand five hundred and seventy six. Why I'm so glad I'm retired now. You know, <laughs> yeah. I'd hate to play against that. Dude. Oh man, but he... stuff on to it being down too is also that's a that's eleven sacks that that went with that man. Yeah, I mean that's that's uh, <laughs> I, I, all these guys are, have given the Bengals nightmares. There's no question about it, and and they know that they've got you know got to bring the lunch pail playing against this defensive football team. Let, let's switch offensively a little bit. Um, it seems like it's funny that the strength of the Bengals, uh, I think the best position group so far in the first two games for the Bengals has been their defensive line, the defensive front. And that seems to be the case with the Steelers. And then the biggest question mark area was the Bengals offensive line. That seems to be the case with the Pittsburgh Steelers as well. Am I off base there? No, I think you're right on. You know, there's a lot of people, a lot of weeping and gnashing of teeth over the offensive line, which Look, when you have four new members right. joining that, plus two of the four are rookies, yep. hey, <laughs> this doesn't happen in Pittsburgh, but it's happening this year. And so you've obviously got some challenges. You have a new offensive line coach, two rookies on the on, uh, front. you got a rookie running back. Um, there's just a lot. There's some newbie work here. Pat Fryer moved. He's a newbie tight end, a rookie tight end. So there's a lot of work to be done. But, you know, here's the thing that I always say with, with people and with a lot of people – it bugs you when they don't play the offensive line. They've not been in there. They don't know what it's like. And you say, give it some time. Cause you know, you cook, you, you, when you make dinner, you got to cook things a little while. You got to get a little heat. You got to have uh, some of the, 
you know, get the impurities out. If you're, if you got gold and stuff like that, you want to refine that gold. Well, it comes through fire. The same thing happens with the offensive line. You get better when you're under fire a little bit yep. through a period of time, because you face hard times and you're going to face hard times. Um, so you might as well just accept it say, Hey, look, you got to battle and you got to grow. And that's where they are right now. What about, uh, Najee Harris, the rookie running back? Uh, give me a little scouting report on that big stud. You love him. I mean, you know, he is a big guy, you know, he's, he's, uh, one of these guys that he's a three down back. Um, he, he can carry the ball, he can catch the ball and he can stuff people on the blitz. He's not afraid to put his grill in your grill mm. and pick up one of those linebackers. Matter of fact, you know, he's not afraid to pick up a, a wanton wild Russian defensive lineman that happens to come off one of the offensive linemen. He'll step, step right up and put his grill on that guy. You know, he carries the ball. He's strong. He's fast. He caught a nice little touchdown. Well, it was a little out padding, but he went 25 yards. Turn around, I mean, he was smelling goal line. Went right down the sidelines and, and supermanned it past a couple of safeties. You know, I mean, the guy is, is he is going to be good. Right now, I think what's happening He's pressing a little bit because, you know, he's looking around and 10 carries, uh, I think he had 38 yards uh, last week. Um, but, you know, he's pressing a little bit. He's not trusting the holder to develop. And uh, I think he's starting to, at times, so just kind of, you know how you over wiggle yourself? Yeah, right. Maybe you zag when you should have zigged and you zig when you should have zagged. And sometimes you double zag or double zig and you get yourself out of, you know, you're out of sorts because you're pressing so much. He's just got to trust the process, keep coming along what he's doing. You can see all the attributes are there, the speed, the power, the ability to break tackles. He's not afraid to, to, to slam it in there when you got to slam it in there and he'll out sprint guys to the corner. So just let him keep working. And I'm sure he's going to come along just fine. Man, he's got a mean stiff arm. He showed that bad boy. Oof. Oh, <laughs> oh no, man. Yeah, did you see no. that one? Oh, baby. Oof. Unbelievable. Uh, what kind of blowback is Trey Turner getting for for what took place in the uh, in the in the football game? What what's the story behind the story there? Well, apparently um, somebody spit in his face, yeah. and um, he returned the uh, you know olfactory function there. You yes. know, yes. <laughs> right? Uh, you know, you know how it is, David, in the trenches. Okay, your life in the trenches is pretty brutal. Um, it's not quite what it used to be. Stuff like that would go on, and you know what? You'd uh, c- conduct a little frontier justice on your own part to take care of the business, right? And that uh, you know that doesn't come along too well because now you got 147 camera angles, and you know you got eyes all over the place so looking to um, you know taunting. You can't get Zooks, David. Taunting. Now you stand over a guy showing a little bit of dominance. If maybe you dropped him or pancaked him, and now they're going to flag you for taunting, right? I you know. I think the NFL is, Tom Brady kind of said it, you know, if you saw the article, he said it, it's a little bit softer than it used to be. <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, the pendulum swings, you know, and a lot of team, times it swings too far and then it's got to swing back and, uh, we'll see, we'll see what kind of right. adjustments are made, you know, but I mean, it's, uh, they're being over as, as, uh, as Marv Levy once said, overly officious as such, you know, don't be overly <laughs> officious. Um, what about. First year offensive coordinator, Matt Canada, new offensive line coach, Adrian Clem. How, how different does the Pittsburgh Steeler offense look to you um, uh, as opposed to when Randy Feitner was there? Well, the thing is, when Rand, Randy had a, a real, um, he believed in, in throwing short, running long. You know, throw yep. that ball short, hit a guy crossing route, let him run long. And that worked, worked well for 11 weeks until the, they realized, okay, there's no running game. To accompany it, I uh, will sit back, cover two, whatever, some zone coverage, and just go make the hit. And so things started to derail at that point, and there were some other factors that that went into it. But the bottom line is that they turned around, and said, "Okay, we're going to retool this. We got to get our running game going." And that's what they're trying to do. They're not as yet have not uh, materialized materialized that, you know. But that Canada came in with the idea that. We're going to run the ball. We're going to add some bells and whistles. We're going to do some, add some shiny pre-snap objects to kind of entertain the defense a little bit. Some mm-hmm. post-snap stuff that's going to, you know, make those. You, what you're trying to do is just out leverage the guys with motion, pre-snap motion, post-snap play action pass, that sort of thing. Anything that make the defensive guys go squirrel, 
You know what I mean? Right. Where right. They, they just stop and they look, right? That's, that's what you, you'd like to do. That's right now, I think, right? They, they're getting to the point where they need to kind of simplify some things and kind of cut down a little bit, maybe on some of the options and just concentrate on some, go with some, uh, you know, some 12 personnel, uh, maybe some 21 and 22 personnel muscle things a little bit, change things up. Um, they've got some people in the tight end that could be very beneficial. You got Derek Watt. I'd like to see a little fullback action. You know how you kickstart a running game with a little bit of fullback. You have that lead guy go up, slam it and, and, you know, you, and see if Najee can, you know, cut off him. And uh, Derek Watt's very good at that. So, you know, I, I'm hoping that they're going to really keep pressing the running attack because yeah, I just, I'm a firm believer in running the ball. You got to. Yep. Yep. I think that's going to be a, probably one of the biggest keys, you know, in this football game, which team will be able to, to uh, run the football well enough to stay balanced and, and take some pressure off their respective quarterback. Speaking of quarterback, Ben, with the left pectoral, and, you know, I mean, we, I know here in Cincinnati people, uh, you know, say, ah, oh, Ben, you know, he's he's such a diva. It, it, Ben's always heard Ben wants to be John Wayne, you know, come to the rescue. What's Ben playing like this year? Well, I think he's playing well. You know, he's not he, – he said he's got to play better. You know, he put some of it on himself, throwing a couple of touchdown passes and one interception. Um, but he's done, I thought, you know, like in Buffalo. You know, he only had 188 total yards, but a lot of people are like, oh, he was terrible. What, what do you mean terrible? You won. Right. You do, you know, you win. Right. You know, forget the stats. I mean, to me, stats are nothing. I mean, you know, he can play, you know, he can win. He's, he's going to be just fine. He's a, he's a future hall of famer. You know, I look at, you, you put on the, again, it, it's the test of the eyes. You, you trust your eyes. You can see Ben makes the throws. He's been hit a lot more than he's used to being. And that's something they have to shore up. That's for sure. You got to have the running game, which I hope that we see more of that under center, you know, three point stance, grass grabbing three point, uh, you know, stuff coming off the ball where you get a little play action stuff that's needed more, but he's going to be fine. He's going to be bad. He's going to do the things that he, he's always done. I look at Joe Burrow, you know, he, he, all you got to do is flip on that tape. and don't, wow, this kid is good. Yeah. You know what I mean? Right. You can see this guy can play. No doubt about it. The same Ben's got a proven track record, eighteen years. No, no question about it. You know, when you look at it, Mike Tomlin, and Ben, one hundred and twenty-eight regular season wins, third most in NFL history. I'm assuming Tom Brady and Belichick would be number one. But I mean, that that's some that's some pretty strong stuff right there. And uh, how about the Steelers? I mean, you know, you, you, this organization is just so prideful. Seventeen consecutive non-losing seasons. That's since the. 1970 merger, second best in NFL history behind the Patriots as well. I, I, that's that's remarkable, remarkable. Mike Tomlin's never had a losing season. It's just uh, really impressive. It really is. You know, David, it's it's such a blessing. You come to this organization, you realize the Rooney way. And the Rooney way is, you know, they have a plan, they stick to the plan, they work the plan. And it's, you know, one of the things like T.J. Watt, you know, all that went on, he was, I guess, is no longer a holdout, but there were hold ins, you know, (laughs) you reported practice. You're not getting fined. You're working on your own. You're not practicing. I don't know. You know, back in our day, that would never fly. You know how that goes. Right. But, uh, you know, um, but now, nowadays, as we always say, they have better days off. And and, uh, in our time, your, your time and my time, that meant you got cut. If you had a better day off. Yep. Yeah. We'll give (laughs) you as many days off as you want. (laughs) <laughs> you can have them all. <laughs> Take all the days exactly. you want, man. <laughs> Un- yeah, unbelievable. It's not a problem. So, yeah. You know, the, the steel organization is just, it's uh, got a great legacy, a great history. And as does the Cincinnati organization, there's all, so many others, Cleveland and everything, you know, as this NFL gets older, but the, the, the franchises are all the richer ever more, you know, good, bad, and different those years they pile up and, you know, for guys like you and me, you know, we have our great memories of the, and just what, we, hey, we did, did we not have a great time when we played, right? Um, absolutely. I mean, there, if, if uh, one thing's for certain, would I do it all over again? Hell yeah. I mean, no, yeah. no question about it. No, <laughs> no matter what the injuries, no matter what, hell yeah, do it again in a heartbeat. Absolutely. No doubt. Heartbeat. So what do you think are a couple of musts for the Pittsburgh Steelers to, uh, to 
you know, to come out with a victory against the Cincinnati Bengals uh, this weekend. What do you, what do you see? Well, you know, I look over and I see guys like Larry Ogan, Joby, yep. and I see DJ reader. Now, by the way, you guys might have three of the heaviest nose tackles I've seen <laughs> right. between reader 347. No nope. Tupo at 345. Yeah. Shelvin at 350. I want to eat with those guys. We go to Golden Corral, brother. You, me, and all those three guys, we'll kill it. That would wow. just be an awesome time. Oh, absolutely. That will, they'd have to close the place down, man. It's done. I mean, they're, they're, <laughs> they can't throw enough food out there. It's over. Absolutely. Yeah. It, I see this, this, you bring in Trey Hendrickson. The guy looks, you know, like a good pass rusher. I've always had great respect for Sam Hubbard and for a bunch of guys. You got Von Bell and Jesse Bates on the back end. Look, I think in my mind, you've got to have better success on first down. Um, and you, we got to have a fast start. We've been starting slow. Uh, we've got to have success on first down. We, we last week, uh, I think or after the uh, Buffalo game, we were averaging like uh, third and 7.6 or 7.7 yards. To get, you got to get that down to third and four, third and threes, makeable third downs. So those are the things I think offensively we have to do. And then defensively, of course, you know, it's going to be able to get, get after um, Joe. Right. You know, Burrow is, 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 as you know, the guy got hit a lot. We've got to make sure that he gets, continues to get hit. You got to have pressure, but it all comes down to, you know, does TJ Watt play, uh, you know, does, does, uh, uh, Alex Highsmith, is he going to be able to play? Um, you know, the, all these question marks. So there, there are a number of question marks in, with body availability, but it really comes down to, I think, for the Steelers, getting a fast start, coming out fast and playing fast, and being able to get that running game going offensively. And then defensively, again, it's how much can they attack at the four-man front, or are they going to have to go to the zone blitz stuff? Yeah, that's those are all, you know, <laughs> to be determined and it, it is it is crazy uh the, the groin it, it there's always seems to be one issue one injury issue whether it's a hamstring yeah. a groin an ankle and it, it it's almost like a contagious virus i mean it goes through the roster you get a bunch of them you know it's like man can't shake this absolutely. one injury it's 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 absolutely crazy <laughs> and you know you know how groins are also one day you start to feel pretty good and then the next day eh, not so much you know after you work out and and uh, you know, go right. to, go to bed, wake up. Uh, it feels a lot, a lot different today. And and the timing. I mean, every groin injury is different. Every recovery is different. Every you know, there there's, there's not any cookie cutter, you know, magical whatever in in uh, determining how long a player is going to be suffering with a groin. So those those injuries are those injuries are tough to deal with. There's no question. You know, I got to share a story with you just because it's Tunch's birthday and. You know, back in our day, it was a little bit different. You and I, Tunch, we all came up with coaches pretty much left it up to us. Yep. Can you play? Yep. You play. Right. You know, and now, now the staff takes over, and and so they'll pull guys. So I was I played up. Actually, it was the last time I played with the Bills. I played against Daryl Talley, and I pulled my groin. So from from my hip to my knee, it was black and blue. My <laughs> leg had swelled up. Yeah. Uh, it was like. Two, two, two and a half inches bigger on my left leg than my right Jeez. because of the swelling. So on, on Wednesday, I'm sitting there on the training table, getting my ankle tape. And I thought, I turned and I go, you know, I should take, I need to take off because I'm, I'm th- I need some time off because I'm going to play the next weekend. And, you know, it's black and blue and everything. I need some time off. And Tunch is sitting there next to me on the table goes, oh, you're going to tell Chuck you need the day off. I go. Yeah, you know, I mean, you see some of these young guys. Some of these young guys come in the league now. This is after I've been a starter for five, six years, whatever. Right. You know, seven, eight. I can't remember. I'm sitting there going, yeah, some of these guys, they come in, they take them off. He goes, oh, yeah. So now he's like, he's poking the bear, right? right. He's like riding me, needling me like, you ain't going to do that. And I'm like, yeah, I'm going to do it. Now I'm in the training room, and I, everybody else is starting to listen in, right? Yeah. So I'm sitting there, and I, I, and I go, you know what? I'm going, I'm going to tell Chuck, I'm taking today off. And I kid you not, like it was a setup. <laughs> 15 <laughs> seconds later, Chuck comes walking into the training room, right? He stops right in front of Tunch and I sitting on the training table where we, we were getting our ankles taped where you sit up there, you know? Yep. And he looks at me and says, Wolf, how you feeling? And I said, I feel great. <laughs> I'm ready to go. He walked <laughs> and everybody just killed me. They were all just hooting and hollering and laughing at me. You uh, said, Tunch said, you folded up like a card table. <laughs> <laughs> Chuck looked at me one, that 
one look and it was like, oh, I'm great, coach. I'm fine. No problem. Oh, Forrest Greg was like that. He oh. had that kind of presence. He'd come in the, into the training room and, and tap you on the head and heal you. You know, it's like, you're good. Get off the table. You're fine. <laughs> you, 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 you can play. You can practice. I, I tore cartilage in, uh, in my knee, uh, Super Bowl season. We we're playing Cleveland, get locked up in a pile, you know, funny and tore some uh, meniscus. And so they scope yeah. it on Monday and, uh, Wednesday, you know, Forrest goes, you're practicing, aren't you? I said, I hadn't really thought about it. He goes, Oh, I have, you're practicing. I'm like, Oh, so, <laughs> so go and get, put, put like a sleeve over it and stuff and go out there hitting the sled. And he goes, how does it feel? A little squishy? I said, yeah, squishy. That's a good way to put it. You know, it's like, geez, but that, you know, the, the expectations were, they were different back then, man. There's no question about it. It's a different, different animal. No doubt. It was a completely different animal. I love how you say he tapped you on the head and you were healed. Yeah. It's like, that's true. It's like, <laughs> right. okay, I'm good to go. I'm ready. Right. One look, one tap. You're good. Yep. You're good on the forehead. You're good. Uh, you, you know, that looks like it might be broken. You, you, you probably going to miss a practice or two, you know, what a, <laughs> unbelievable. It was crazy. Crazy. Oh, it was a different NFL back then. My friend, you ain't kidding. No question about it. But one thing that, uh, that, that for sure, man, whenever the Steelers and Bengals and, and any, any, any ASC North division game, that's double chin strap, you know, put on the big boy pads. It's going to be a physical right. day. There's, there's, you know, you know, bring the, you, you better hunker down and, and punch the clock. Cause you're going to be working overtime, man. It's going to be an all day deal. No question about it. I'm excited. You know, you love those rivalry games. This is what I like, but I know you're the same type of competitor that I was too, David. And you go, you look at these games, you go, you know what? You don't have to say, I'm sorry at all. You know, there's no forget me not that you, 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 th- you throw out to the other guys. This is one of those ball up the fist, yeah. line up, like you said, two chin strap, maybe duct tape your mouthpiece in, <laughs> right. and go at it. And, you know, it's, it's just, it's great family fun. If you could throw a guy down and gore him, you do it. Cause you know that he would do it to you if he could, yep. you know? So it's just one of these games that you never worry about, uh, you know, sorry, this, or, you know, if something gets a little out there, you go at it. And that's the way I think it's, it's going to be. And that's still, frankly, I love the AFC North football. That's good. Hard fought, hard contested football. Couldn't agree more. Agree a hundred thousand percent. Well said by a fellow Syracuse alum. <laughs> You're 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 the man. Or as Tunch calls me an attendee. Att- <laughs> attendee, yeah, that, he's a class. That's a classic. He is a class. I'll tell you what. I'm gonna miss the guy, man. This will be the first, yeah, uh, me too. first, first game. You know, you know how we we just always get together before every game. I mean, it's. Uh, I look forward to it. It's Absolutely. a it's a it's a hell of a thing. I know. And the bond is uh, strong. But I look forward to catching up with you in the Berg on Sunday. Uh, and uh, you're the man, Craig. Appreciate you. Hi, Dave Lapham here. Have you heard about In the Trenches with Dave Lapham presented by First Star Logistics? Catch new episodes from the world of sports and broadcasting. Search for In the Trenches with Dave Lapham on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts.